Project Link, focusing on urban development of an underground system in central London, is brought to you by Team CH2S Prefly. Our project is concerned with the development of a new link between the north and the south of the River Thames, connecting Clapham Junction, a new station in Chelsea, Sloane Square and Victoria. This map also presents the four locations along Kings Road we will be considering for a new station. Clapton Junction, an existing population of 40,000, they are one of the busiest stations in Europe, with 30 million of users at the station every year. Planned development on the underground connection to the Pardesty Power Station and a new 30 minute direct train line to the Heathrow Airport. We have also done some researches for the Imperial Wharf area since the London Borough of Hammersmith and Fulham Court Road station is there. The area at present has a population of 13,000 and 5,600 households. The most popular mode of transport is the London Underground. In the future, the whole area will be developed with at least 2,200 residential units with 300 to 500 jobs created. Battersea area population of 36,000 and 39 acres of free land. The government is converting the land into a new residential and a commercial centre in the London. £1 billion is being invested in the Northern Line. With that, people from Battersea Station can travel to Westminster in 8 minutes and City in 12 minutes. They are expected to be completed in the next 6 years. In the northern end of the study area is Victoria. At present, there is a population of 20,000 and the underground is the most popular mode of transport for commute to work. On top of that, there are 50,000 people reaching the station every day. In the future, the Westminster City Council will develop the Victoria Opportunity Area for office, retail and residential use. In the Kings Road area, there is a relatively small proportion of unemployed as well as people over 65 years old. Furthermore, there is a large proportion of people in employment and full-time workers. 21.6% work in financial and insurance services, while there is a large proportion of high earners. Therefore, these people work in the City of London and a transport link to Central London is vital for the area. Using this data, we came up with four alternative routes for our new transport link. One route that follows the existing Crossroad 2 alignment, passing through Clapham Junction, Kings Road, Sloan Square and Victoria. A new line fully underground that would also include Imperial Wharf Station. A new line also fully underground that would consider Battersea Station. And then a combination of an overground link between Clapham Junction and Imperial Wharf, a dip to an underground state at Imperial Wharf, and then underground between Kings Road, Sloan Square and Victoria from then on. We then considered all four options equally, taking into account their flexibility, their feasibility, their construction, their cost and their impact on the local population. Weighing all of these together, we consider that option two is the most adequate, i.e. a fully underground connection between Clapham Junction, Imperial Wharf, Kings Road, Sloan Square and Victoria. The Chelsea Farmers Market was the first station proposal. It is a leisure space which is more successful during summer months, so we could argue that our station would be more profitable to the area. It is too close to Sloan Square and completely ignores the western end of Kings Road. It is owned by NHS and it's therefore really hard to acquire. We know that the fire station is council owned. The council supports the idea of a station, so this site would be easy to obtain. A station on this site would bring most of the south of the borough within a kilometer of an underground station. However, it's strongly disapproved by the locals, and it's only providing a station at each end of the busiest stretch of King's Road, completely ignoring the western end. A station on the Cineworld Cinema sites would attract more shoppers to the western end of King's Road, and it would bring all of the south of the borough within a kilometer of an underground station. It is privately owned, so a buyout would be really expensive, and it's solely part of the building available. For the World's End car park, it shares the same pros and cons as the cinemas. They are both near to Beaufort Street, with some additional points. For example, the space is large and mostly commercial, so no relocation is required. But however, the car park is available to only the residents that live in the tower beside it. So this is a very expensive solution as any buyout will need to include the resident tower. From our research into station design, we came across a survey of the Evening Standard we showed a list of people's favorite station. From this station, we took the best features from each to incorporate into our own preliminary design. Themes and art form, natural light and large spaces were the dominant features. On the fire station, we tried to integrate a large, fully transparent roof with a large open entrance to allow for easy flow in and out of the station with a lot of natural light to create a nice and open environment.
For the cinema, the top floors might prevent us from having the natural light we would have wanted. So to compensate for this, we tried to make the station entrance as wide an open space as possible. Inspired by the Apple Store in Covent Garden, we found various sustainable materials to incorporate its architectural features into our station design. Some of these materials include wool bricks, sustainable concrete and solar panels. The three pillars of sustainability are the economy, the society and the environment. With respect to the construction of our station, we must appreciate that sustainability is not only to do with the material used by the project, but also with the method of construction, project planning and waste management. We will consider all aspects of the construction of any structure. This includes everything from the procurement of the material to the delivery of the project and post monitoring. For engineering, we need to consider codes of practice such as Euro codes and London specification regulations. When considering track geometry, we need to take into account permissible speed, transition curves, vertical curves and operating speed. Tunneling depends on alignment, ground conditions and the equipment such as tunnel boring machines. Using some assumptions and estimations, we came up with total benefits and costs that gave a BCR of 1.65. Experimenting with the Excel sheet, we noticed that BCR is sensitive to changes in capital costs, transport passengers, and especially construction time. Changing the time from 5 years to 4 years increased the BCR significantly to 2.84. The next steps for our group are to dive into more detailed planning for various elements such as the tunnel diameter, the route alignment, the various platforms and stations we will be building. We will be focusing specifically on the King's Road location, which is an entire new station, with specific attention to construction planning, scheduling, procurement, and of course safety all around. On behalf of Project Link, we would like to say thank you to Imperial College, Civil Engineering Department, Dr. Majinda, Dr. Phillips, and from CH2M Hill, Shahid Ishmael and Ben Marsh. <laughs>